on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. The Ethereum ERC20 token standard has now officially been accepted by the Ethereum developers. I bought the dip yesterday and I'll show you where I got in. And Bitmain debuts a new piece of GPU mining hardware. All of that and a mini market roundup on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay tuned for that. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney, the founder of Cryptoversity, the online school where you can learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Find out more at Cryptoversity.com. Let's get into the market roundup for the day. Bit of a bigger mix today between the big winners and the big losers. Most of the top 10 are just mild losers with the 1 or 2% loss. Let's pick out a couple of good ones though. We have in 18th place, would you believe it, the coin that I've only just started talking about casually, ARK. ARK has gained 23.56% in the last 24 hours, which is huge compared to everything else. Kind of strange, maybe, maybe I've got the Midas touch in this regard. Anyway, ARK now has a market cap of $418.8 million, and that's brought ARK up to $4.29. Now, that's, you know, look at the seven day trend here. I swear, seven days ago, it was around $2 or something. So 11.7 .7 million has been traded of ARK in the last 24 hours. That's $11.7 .7 million of ARK traded in the last 24 hours. Yesterday, we spoke about ARK being now supported by the Ledger Nano S hardware wallet. I'm not sure that's exactly why the price jumped. If you do look at ARK's trend, though, it has been going up consistently for at least a couple of weeks now. So kind of interesting stuff. Biggest loser, by contrast, is Quantum in the top 15, is actually number 15, down 12.64% to $11.12 a coin, and a $655 million market cap. That's a little bit of a surprise considering Quantum is in the process of launching its mainnet blockchain. But despite that, the price is down 12.64%. In terms of the most traded altcoin of the day, Monero is the winner in that regard, with $131.8 million dollars of trading volume. Its own price is up 8.9%, so a decent game in the top 10 there. It puts a Monero around $115.09 and a $1.7 billion market cap. We're getting towards that point where you need to be, what, at least a billion dollar coin to be in the top 10, approaching 1.5 billion minimum to be in the considered a top 10 by market cap. That's absolutely huge. Honorable mention goes to IOTA, which is up 9.81% in the last 24 hours. IOTA is ranking just below Monero there in ninth place. It's a good $140 million behind in terms of market cap. IOTA is there at 1.59 billion market cap, and Monero is 1.73. So for a million IOTA tokens, which is what's it, what it's measured in, you're looking at about 57 cents for a million IOTA coins. Now for the Crazy Coin Award, we go all the way down to nearly to the bottom of the top 100. Do you remember this one? Pationary, 49.96% gain on the day. That's the biggest gain in the top 100 today. So we have 37.2 million market cap, nearly $10 million of trading volume, and a Pationary token will now cost you around about 53 cents. I said, do you remember this? Because they did some pretty heavy marketing for their ICO. And just to recap, they are putting medical data on the blockchain type of thing. So it might re it reminds me a bit of that Bowhead Health one. Although while they are roughly in the same industry in terms of the health industry and putting uh, health data on the blockchain, they are not direct competitors in that regard because Bowhead was about those self-dispensing machines and so on. It was more of a, an ecosystem they were building. Whereas Pationary, as far as I can tell, is more about that data on the blockchain type of stuff, which is, which is an absolutely critical use case. So it um, looks like they're, they're doing well in the markets, up 50% on the day. So good luck to them. All right, that's all for the market roundup. Let's move on to the news stories for today. Well, the first news story is kind of a blend between the market roundup and the news, which is yesterday I bought the dip. So let me show you exactly what I did there. 
So I'm going to go over to Coinigy for this, like I normally do. So this is the Bitcoin chart against the US dollar. So I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit here. I've actually drawn out the trade plan, if you like. So I was looking at these big falls and I was like, oh, that's just too tempting. These big crashes. Um, and you can see this, this green and red sort of rectangle situation going on here. So I entered there where the bottom of the green triangle is. So green triangle, green rectangle. So I went in when it was about $3,800. That's roughly the area where I went in. And then if you look at the risk reward ratio here, I need to zoom out for this because it's quite a broad range. So the overall Coinigy is reporting this is a, it's like a five to one reward to risk ratio. So we can target way back up there at around 4,900. And then the the loss here is about um, 3,600. So that would be like the stop point at 3,600 and the profit point would be about 4,800. So it's a five, one, five to one reward to risk ratio because if it gets to the profit target, it will be a 27% gain. And if it gets to the stop loss, then it will be like a 5.4% loss. And so far going pretty well. Um, you can see I've, I'm betting on, if you like, I'm betting on protection from this Fibonacci retracement line and it bouncing back above both the 50 day moving average and the $4,000 mark. So we'll keep an eye on that and we'll see how it goes. But I figured I should, um, if I'm always say buying the dip, I should make sure I buy, my, buy the dip myself, right? All right, in terms of actual news then, the ERC20 token standard has officially been formalized by the Ethereum developers. The Merkel tells us about this in its article by JP Buntix, and Bun, Buntinx, <laughs> with an X on the end. So it's funny, you know, we talk about ERC20 tokens, but they've never been formally accepted as an official standard by the Ethereum developers until now. But they've almost been operating like that, haven't they? Like for the last two years, the ERC20 standard for creating Ethereum-based tokens, it's been used, well, informally by the community, just because they freely saw it as having obvious benefits, right, of having a token framework that say it shared the same architecture. So that's why it's just a formality really to officially adopt ERC20 into the Ethereum protocol. Now this change also includes a standard API for based tokens with a smart contract. So that means that tokens can now talk to each other. So you could have any token reused by any other Ethereum based app and, and also retaining the full decentralization of Ethereum. Imagine that. At the moment, we kind of think of as these coins that are powering the apps to be sort of in a closed ecosystem. And then you have to do like, um, you have to go to an exchange and then swap them, you know, buy and sell them. But what if, what if you could, you could have, um, if you could have say pay tokens inside of the Patientary app and all that kind of stuff, it just completely opens up a, a completely free market where tokens can be held and, uh, used in any app that uh, is on Ethereum. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Such is the benefit to having a common standard, I would say. So now that that's formally been uh, accepted, more technologies can be built on top of it since developers have confidence that the ERC20 token standard is here to stay. Moving on from there, we have a story out of the Coin Telegraph, which is Bitmain debuts high-speed GPU miners after rolling out their Dash uh, product. So let's have a look at this here. I've highlighted a few pertinent pieces here. So the red bit, which is the beginning of the article, says mining hardware manufacturer Bitmain has today released two ASIC style products specifically for mining Ethereum and its forks. Now it says specifically ASIC style products, right? Not actual ASICs. They're not actually ASIC uh, chips, but they are custom mining chips that have graphics chips on them. So they're custom mining hardware that use graphics card based chips. So I thought that was a key word to pick out. It then goes on to say this release comes just a week after the company debuted its Antminer D3, which focused on the privacy centric altcoin Dash. Okay, that's fair enough. Furthermore, it says with both units costing around 3000 US dollars, immediate reactions from the mining community members focused on the fact that 
those purchasing them were likely only paying for convenience. I'll come back to that in one second. But it also says, quote here, this is a quote from one of the uh, Bitcoin Talk Reddit users, quote, it's much cheaper and way more profitable to build your own mining rig in the long run. So if that's true, then these new products are designed by Bitmain to be something that people would buy rather than something that is superior in performance, right, to the alternative, which is just building your own mining rig with full-size graphics cards. All right, guys, thanks very much for joining me today. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses that will teach you things like how to make and save money with Bitcoin, check out Cryptoversity.com. All right, guys, that's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now. <laughs>